with me now. No. This is my life. Get in. We're taking off. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Didn't you blurt that out just like that? Why wouldn't I? His heart can't handle our gravity. He wasn't mine. He's running out of time. I was scared I wouldn't know how to be human. You made me human. Tulsa, what's your favorite thing about Earth? You are Gardner. The Space Between Us. This is kind of half rom-com, half Mission to Mars kind of movie. Um, starring Gary Oldman, Asa Butterfield, and Britt Robinson. Um, and this movie is really kind of weird. And there's some parts of it that were pretty good. And then there were some parts that were uh, absolutely horribly garbage. Um, let's start with the good, however small that might be. First, and the first thing I'm going to talk about that I liked is visually, it is very, very good. Um, there are a lot of scenes uh, in space, them going to space. Then there's these other scenes where these giant sweeping uh, locations with uh, great landscapes and things. It is all pretty beautiful and uh, looks really great for the most part. The entire movie looks great. Without a doubt, Gary Oldman is the best here. Um, he is pretty decent minus some of the dialogue, which I'll go into here in a minute. Britt Robinson is just kind of, I don't know, she has like kind of this shtick where she's kind of like a, I'm a, a, an orphan kid with an attitude kind of thing, and it gets old pretty quick. And I like Britt Robinson, but this was not uh, her best performance. Asa Butterfield, he has some funny moments, and he's okay in this, but it's not like, it didn't blow me away or anything. He was just okay. The overall story was pretty interesting. What you have, these six astronauts are on uh, a mission to Mars to colonize Mars. Uh, the lead astronaut is a woman and uh, she ends up being pregnant. She didn't know she was pregnant, but she's pregnant on the trip there. When she has the kid who is Asa Butterfield, she dies giving birth and he has to stay on Mars. Um, when he come, he wants to come back to Earth really bad, and so when he comes back to Earth, uh, they don't know if he's if his body is going to be able to uh, handle Earth's atmosphere and things because he's so used to Mars. It's pretty interesting. Um, that first probably this is a two-hour movie, and that first hour of the movie is mainly about the trip to Mars and him trying to come back to Mars, um, and it's pretty interesting. I was actually enjoying it for the most part. Um, I was like, no, oh, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but the whole, once he starts having a lot of conversations with the Britt Robinson character, who he kind of has a crush on um, and ends up uh, trying to meet when he gets to Earth, um, that's when it's, this movie really starts to take a nosedive towards horrible. Uh, let's start off with the worst dialogue I have seen in a movie probably since Attack of the Clones. I mean... There are some cringe-worthy dialogue going on in this movie that people just don't talk like this. I swear, there was parts of it I thought George Lucas wrote the dialogue. It was that bad. Um, it was just characters having these stupid, quippy, these like dated, cool lingos that didn't make any sense. Uh, the way they talk to each other, they, you never got a really good connection between these two characters because their dialogue was just so corny. Sometimes it would be funny, but then sometimes it would be so over the top and so dramatic and so serious uh, that it was just, just god awful. Another thing I didn't like is this movie tries to throw some twists at you and within, I swear to God, within the five, first five minutes of this movie, I saw how it was going to end. Um, it's so obvious. So I don't even know why they bothered with trying to keep it hidden because uh, you knew what was going to happen. There are a lot, a lot of plot holes and plot conveniences. The technology in this movie is so confusing. At times it's really cool, uh, like there's self-driving cars and things, but then at times it's like uh, they're able to track someone down. You don't know how. Sometimes they're able to track someone down just with a picture. It's just the technology in this movie is just so weird and there's just too many times 
when it just, you know, is there to kind of move the plot along and doesn't make any sense whatsoever. With all this being said, I didn't hate the movie. Like, it has a really low score on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm not going to just destroy the movie. Like I said, there are some funny moments. I found myself laughing a lot uh, at Asa Butterfield's character when he's on Earth and he doesn't know, you know, how to interact with people. There are some great scenes where he meets a homeless man. Uh, where he's traveling along with her when they're not having really corny dialogue there's some funny moments in there and all the space stuff at the beginning I kind of enjoyed so while this isn't a great movie probably not worth going and seeing in theaters I would recommend uh, if you like kind of a love story intertwined with some sci-fi I'd recommend a rent here I'm gonna give the space between us a two and a half out of five if you like this video click that like button Comment below if you want to talk to me about anything. Uh, click the Rainy Cage button to subscribe and keep up to date with all my videos. And I'll leave you with a few of my most recent videos and some of these sweet, sweet dance moves. This is Rainy Cage. Peace out.